So for my project, I developed a test to detect a protein called ESAT6, which is specific to the bacteria Mycobacterium tuberculosis, which causes tuberculosis in humans, or urban organisms. And tuberculosis is a widespread infectious disease. It affects, it has infected approximately one third of the world's population, and Um, there are many tests already out for detecting tuberculosis, but most of them have problems. Um, I'll tell you about three types. There's blood tests, tissue cultures, and um, x-rays, chest x-rays. So the problem with um, tissue cultures is, although they are very, they're actually pretty reliable, um, Mycobacterium tuberculosis is a very slow-growing bacteria. So it could take up to two to six weeks to grow the culture, and by that time, it's just too long and it's too expensive. Blood tests are... The blood tests used in the medical field right now, they detect TB antibodies. And the problem with this is TB antibodies stay in a person's bloodstream. They stay in a person's blood, basically, long after the TB bacterium is gone. So that could lead to a false testing of positive. Um, if a person recently had tuberculosis and they don't now, but they had the skin test. That's also the problem, yeah. And um, chest x-rays, pretty good, but they can only detect pulmonary tuberculosis. And one more thing, there is a vaccine, the VCG vaccine, which is like to prevent tuberculosis, but the problem with this is it injects antibodies in someone's blood, and that messes up um, tuberculin skin tests. Gives a false reading of positive when a person might not. Okay, anyway, that was a too long background. <clears throat> Moving on, so how I did this, I used an assay called an ELISA, which stands for Enzyme-Linked Immunosorbent Assay. And basically what an ELISA does is a detection test, and it will emit a color Wait, okay, it will emit a color based on how much antigen. Antigen, what I mean by antigen is what you're trying to detect. So in our case, ESAT6. Uh, it will detect how much antigen is in a well, and there will be color produced. The darkness of the color depending on how much antigen is in that well, the concentration. So the first step I did was I put serial dilutions in each row, which is basically decreasing uh, amounts of antigen in rows 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, the most in row 1, and then none in row 10. And after that, I read the colors under a spectrophotometer. And you're at 450 nanometers, and these are the optical density values that I got. And so, using these values, I put them into graph form, which is down here, and basically, I made another graph which related the optical density that was in a well to how much or the concentration of ESAT6 that I had put in that well. So this is the calibration curve right here. And this is just the logarithmic transformation. I changed it into a line so I could get an equation right there. And to test the effectiveness of this curve, I was given 10 unknown samples. And these 10 unknown samples, they some of them had ESAT6 in them, some of them didn't, they had different amounts, and basically to test, I had to find out how much was in each sample. So I performed the ELISA, got the colors, read it under the spectrophotometer, and I would, well, I got the optical density values. And using this equation graph, um, if you know the optical density values, then you can find how much um, concentration of ESAT6 is in that sample. So those are my results the unknowns, and they matched up with the actual amounts, so it worked. <laughs> and if I had more time to work on this, I'd probably have done more tests, maybe. Try to improve the sensitivity of the test, and also, in the future, you could also try a license with um, a different protein, maybe different tuberculosis proteins to maybe find the best 
most sensitive diagnostic test. And of course, we want to test this on actual human patients because that's the, the goal.